everyone, my name is Rick Bassett, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today I'll be tying a damselfly pattern. I'm trying to get into a little bit more into the uh, into the seasons. So, you know, at the beginning of the year there were certain patterns. Now we're moving on to damsels and dragons. We've already done the chronomids and the maize. Not that chronomids and maize aren't still around, but um, I just wanted to, to to move along here within the season. So I'm going to do a, a damselfly pattern uh, today. And then uh, in the next day or two or, or three, I'll be doing a dragon pattern and uh, some leeches as well, just because uh, leeches are always around. So, but uh, yeah, so this is uh, a kind of a CDC body with a little bit of a rib damsel. You'll see. It's a really effective fly, lots of movement. Not the prettiest looking when you tie it, but when it's in the water, phenomenal. That CDC really gathers the light and moves well. So, okay, I'm going to switch over to the other camera. In the uh, vise right now, we have a Hens BL724 in a size 12. Now, this is a fairly large hook. Um, I'll tie these in a 12 and a 14 um, in the Hens. For the, um, for the uh, eyes, I'll be using some uh, mono eyes from Wapsi. See? See, in a green. Okay, um, if you want to know how to make your own uh, mono eyes, uh, uh, I know Deb Pascal did a uh, did a, a little uh, a video a little while ago about how to make your own mono eyes and stuff. And there's other ones on there too, but Deb did, does a really good job, so go check her out. Um, for the tail, I'll be using some fox fur, and I just want to get these outer wispies right. I like how the fox moves, uh, moves really well. I like how how marabou moves as well, but fox, I just really like it how when it's wet how it moves. Um, <clears throat> some hackle in green for the legs then for the body I'm going to be using some uh, CDC this is old like CDC that I've I've uh, I've cut the tips off of and stuff for other flies so I kept this and I'm going to be dubbing the body with this so I'll rip it off of the the center post and then I'll, I'll dub it or I can actually I can grab it with a, with a material clip and do it that way too up to me um, or up to you <clears throat> then I will be using some uh, um, some of the uh, Zemperfly body span uh, in a green so in, in this color here for a rib and um, that is it um, so let's get her going and so out and some Zemperfly nano silk in a 12 on so a little bit of wax on my thread I'm gonna go back about two three mil let's give this a bit of a start here now everybody is a little different with when it comes to the eyes. Some people like putting them in right at the end. Some people like putting them in right at the beginning. I'm a guy that likes putting them in right at the beginning because that gives me a target for where to stop with the rest of my material. I do want to leave a little bit of space up here because when I'm at the end, I'm going to wrap some. Uh, I'm going to wrap some uh, uh, CDC around. So, so I'm just going to lay my eyes right in the center right where I stopped just like that give it a couple of couple of wraps and then just give it a turn sorry if my hands in the way but so I've given it a turn and then I'm gonna go with two three times that way two three times this way not too tight at first and then I can really start cranking so now I can start doing my figure eight if I want just get that locked down the figure eight I mean you can go this way and this way um, and it does, it works, but uh, the figure eight pattern, it just really helps lock it down really well. So then I will, I always put a, where is it, a little dab of crazy glue right on the eyes there, <clears throat> just to help them so they don't turn. So I just put a dab on the top, a dab on the bottom, not much, just needs a tiny bit, just to help that. And then I'm going to go back over this a bit. So now my eyes are, are secured in. Okay, so make sure they're on top. Oh, look, yeah, they're good. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my tie-in point here. I'm gonna grab a piece of the fox fur for the tail. Now I, do, I want the, like I said, I want the, the tips of this. I don't really want the under fur, so I'm gonna take a decent little chunk here, okay? 
and I'm going to cut cut it off. And then I'm going to brush all this under fur out of it. So I cut that off, right? Then I'm going to hold it tight by the tips that I want to keep. And I'm going to get my brush and I'm just going to brush this out. Sorry, I'm doing it on the table below here, but it's much easier for me. So basically I'm just pulling all this under fur out of it. Okay. It just helps because I don't need much of a tail, but it helps with uh, <clears throat> keeping that body slender. So I want to be about one to one and a half times the length of the body. So I'm going to go about where, where my finger is. And I'm just going to catch that in just loosely. Make sure this stays up on top. Just catch that in and that will give it a tighten and a tighten. See if that's good. Yeah, I like that. So. Now I'm just with, with open wraps, I'm just going to come forward, trying to keep this material on top. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just makes it look a little bit better if you can keep it on top. So I'm just going to go close to the back of the eyes. I actually moved those eyes. I'm going to have to tighten those up. So that's fine. And then right there, I'm going to stop. I'm going to nip off my material, throw that away. I'm just going to go back and tighten these eyes up because they moved on me and I don't like that. So I'm just going to really crank down on that. I don't want them moving. There we go. So now, <clears throat> just get this material all bound down nicely. And I always, with tails, like lifting them and going in behind. Okay. There. I like that nice and it's it's nice and scraggly and, and and but the stuff will move so well fox moves so well it's beautiful the way it moves so so now <clears throat> take a piece of the body span it's going to come forward here just lock it in right at the front here once you've got it locked in give lock it in first once you've got it locked in then you can give her a nice stretch just to keep the body thin right key with damsels is thin 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 keep it as thin as you can this one is thin but it's on the borderline for thickness in my opinion i like them really thin um, if you ever see a damsel in the wild they're super super thin so <clears throat> excuse me i got a bit of a frog in my throat of course when i want to do a video you get a frog so now i'm going to take some of this uh this scrap cdc like you can tell that i cut off the tips on that one see so I'm just going to peel off all the fibers off of each side and then throw away the, the center. I want to keep these fibers fairly long. You'll see why. But I'm just peeling them off. Let's say three feathers. I said this, the CDC is too expensive to throw away the scrap after you've, after you've used the tip, like the tips and stuff. So. So now I'm just going to grab a little bit of this. I'm going to put a little bit of wax on my thread. <clears throat> and I'm just going to loosely dub. And I do a little bit at a time. I keep adding. I don't want this too tight. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. Take a little bit more and put it on. Again, not a tight dub, just tight enough to hold it on. Right to there. Take my body span and really tight. I want to get this nice and tight into the body, right down into that body. Open wraps. And I'm doing opposite, right? Because I'm holding that. Trying to hold that CDC in. <clears throat> Just tighten that down. Make sure that's really good tight and then give this a real good stretch and cut that off and that'll suck that right down. You won't see anything of it. Alrighty, so now <clears throat> I take my little dubbing brush here and I'm just gonna, I've got Velcro on the backside and I'm just gonna pull out some of that CDC. 
That's why I want it loose, because I want to be able to pull that out just a bit. There. Because when that gets wet, that just that'll just fall right down. And it gets nice and sleek and slender. So yeah. There you go. Like I said, it's not the prettiest looking fly when it's done here, but it works really, really well. <coughs> I'm gonna take one feather from down below here, because I want the shorter I don't want the shorter fibers. I don't need really long ones. Right, so I'm gonna peel off all my my uh, fluff on the bottom here. Get rid of all that because I don't need it for this fly. And then, so there's my. That's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna take the center here. I'm just gonna create a tie-in point. I'm gonna cut that off to a nice little triangle. And I'm gonna just lay that right in there with the shiny side towards me. Okay, and then I always, this is the leading edge, right? This is the leading edge when I wrap this way. So I always, because I don't want this too thick, I tear that off. So now I've only got one side. Because I only want a wisp of legs, right? I don't want a ton here. I just want like, a few fibers so once that's wrapped come back over top here lock it down a couple of times <clears throat> pull that stem back lock it down just get in there oops as tight as you can with the scissor get that off just hold the stuff back a little bit Give it two, three turns in there. <clears throat> like I said, that's not a lot of not you don't want a lot of legs. That's that's about maximum. So again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, wax on my thread. I'm gonna take some more of that that beautiful CDC. Just gonna give it a again a light-ish dub. That may be a little bit tighter this time, but not a lot. And then I'm gonna wrap right behind, over top of the eyes, and that's it. Now I'm gonna take my whip finisher. <clears throat> Sorry about the frog, guys, but. My six turn whip finish and I'm going to take some of my Sally Sally Hansen's a little bit onto the thread That's a four or five turn whip finish nip that off I'm going to close my Sally Hansen's because I've done that before where I've not ended up knocking it over if there's any of these like you see there's a long long one there just rip that off you don't need the real long ones and then if you want you can take your brush and just brush out a little bit of that CDC don't have to but you can and that is the finished fly <clears throat> really effective super slow just just move it in in, in a slow uh, slow moving on a on a floating line there's no weight on this you want it on a floating line or if anything if you want to get down a little bit you put it onto a type one like a short type one sink tip like a three foot or a five foot sink tip uh, but a type one you don't want to go deep with these uh, damsels when they migrate towards shore to uh, to go and hatch they come up from the bottom of the substrate they come straight up and then they move just below the surface, they move across to a weed, a log, a rock, or whatever. Um, so uh, they're exact opposite from the dragonfly, where the dragonfly will crawl across the bottom using the uh, the, the rocks and, and stuff at the bottom to, to hide as they crawl towards the weeds, and then they crawl out. So um, you always have to remember that dragons across the bottom and up, damsels up and across the surf, uh, just below the surface. So, um, so yeah, so I, I like anchoring myself close to a weed bed, casting out and stripping it back towards the weed bed, the natural way 
that the that the damsel would move and do a couple of short little quick strips a couple of six eight inch long slow strips a couple of quick strips um, damsels don't move fast but they do move a little bit like almost like a minnow right they kind of have that 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 undulation to their tail right so alrighty hope you enjoyed that if you did give me your thumbs up um, if you subscribed thank you very much if you haven't please consider doing so hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uh, future videos and like I said in the, in the future here I'll be tying up some uh, dragons and uh, some leeches and yeah, we'll just go throughout the season, get to some boatmen later on in the year. So, alrighty. Tie lines, everybody.